first of all, really great to see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So I just before we get started into why I get to talk to you today, I loved nine days and oh, thank you. loved it. And it's been frustrating talking about a movie that I saw over a year ago that hasn't come out yet. So mm-hmm. are you just like me, like just waiting for this thing to come out? Yes. <laughs> you know, it was supposed to come out last year, but then obviously, obviously 2020 changed a lot of stuff. So then it was going to come out in January, but then they pushed it now. As far as I understand, it's coming out in August. Yeah. Who knows if that's true or not? But um, yeah, it's, um, you know, you saw the film. I think it's a really special movie. That ca- that cast and crew is also very special to me. It's just a very life affirming uh, you know, positive movie about life. And I, I, I'm i looking forward yeah. to seeing it. Yeah, I'm glad you feel that way. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I oh, love that movie. I, it's real good. Um, so the, everyone I've been interviewing the last year, I asked the same first two questions. Uh, uh, what TV sh- uh, series do you want to guest star on? Ooh, I'm watching Fleabag right now. It's a really good show. I'd love to be on that show. <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, I know I'm I'm late to that game I suppose. Uh and um yeah, I guess that's my answer. Sure. What movie or movies do you think you've seen the most? Mm. In my life or in the last year? Oh, like in your life. We're talking In my like, life? Oh, yeah. that's easy. Um Sound of Music, Singing in the Rain, Bridesmaids, Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> sure. Uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you saw the first three episodes of Invincible and the best compliment I can give it is that if I had had access to more episodes I would have continued watching like Uh, immediately mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I'm just curious the the voice cast that they got for this show is ridiculous was it one of these things where either A they slid you an extra five dollars or B was it that uh, they offered you like a close up zombie role and walking dead like how did this cast come together you know what? I don't know. I was one of the last people, I think, to get the call and the cast was already there. And I was like, yeah, obviously I'm doing this. Um, but I also, you know, I don't know. Honestly, the writing kind of speaks for itself. Like uh, Robert is great at what he does. And um, the reading the pilot, uh, you know, it, it's just a really engaging story. And I think it's super grounded and it feels really human. And, you know, I it was an easy yes for me, frankly. So, um, and also the fact that he was involved in the series as the creator of the comic, that to me was very like, I felt, I felt like it was in good hands and I trusted that he was very involved in the whole recording process and everything. So, um, you know, I knew his voice was going to be in the televised version as well. So yeah, the cast, I think, and people just liked the material. Once you got the role, how much were you sort of like, I'm going to read the comics, I'm going to learn everything there is, and how much are you sort of like, you know, I I would rather just, you know, like, how much do you want to know about everything, and how much do you want to sort of take it by season by season? Um, I, I did sort of a bit like, so I didn't like read all the comics, but I definitely like did some, did some research and I, and I read some, um, I also know the show is, is a bit different, is not the exact same storyline as the comics. It is a bit different. Um, you know, for me, it was more important to kind of get the, the feel and the vibe and the tone. And then also to get to know some of these characters sort of as baselines, um, and so, yeah, I'm kind of like more, I suppose, season by season in a way, um, but then also not necessarily expecting the storylines to completely overlap either. Completely. What is it? I've spoken to so many different people that work on different animated shows. Sometimes everyone does stuff in a group the way like they did Rango. Sometimes it's, you know, everyone's in a box by themselves. Sometimes it's like they record everything in one day and other people, it could be like two years of recording. So yeah. for your journey on this, how was it? Uh, it was alone, um, but relatively quickly. So I think the majority of us, I'm assuming, kind of recorded this like spring of 2019. Um, oh, okay. And, and yeah, I was on my own, you know, besides the director and Robert and some producers who were on the other side of the glass sort of giving me guidance. Um, I know some of the actors, I think Stephen and J.K. Simmons, 
and maybe Sandra Oh, I think had an opportunity to record together. Like some people got to do it together, but uh, you know, I, I was on my own. Um, so yeah, you know, and it was over, it was over a little bit of time because they were working on the episodes and kind of doing it like episodically. Uh, so I wasn't just whipping out all of my character <laughs> or the whole season. Um, but that is traditionally anything I've done animated has kind of been that. Yeah. Um, I, what's interesting is like on what's the, there was a uh, surf's up. They did a lot of recording together. And I think that you can sort of tell because the dialogue is on top of each other. And yes. it, it, it's sort of, it's really cool. It yeah. is. I think it is. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm sure it just costs more money, I guess, but I'm surprised they don't do that more often because I really do think you would get a better, um, not saying that Invisible isn't amazing, but I do think to have the natural banter, you know, I did actually, I am recording something right now where I'm having the opportunity to, to record via Zoom with another one of the actors. Um, and yes, we are like overlapping and the, the banter is different and we're able to feed off of each other's energy. And obviously when you're not doing that, the directors uh, of, or the director of, of an animated series is working with other people. So they know what other people are doing. And they're like, Oh, we just did this scene this way with Steven. And he said it like this, maybe you can try an option where you say it like that too. And then sometimes they'll rework a scene and then they call you back in being like, actually the tone shifted because this actor did that. And so we're including that. And so you just come in more often and then re-record essentially. But yeah, I think nothing beats like chemistry. Yeah. You're making me wonder. Um, I just spent, I just did a two hour interview with Gore Verbinski. And now I'm mm -hmm. wondering if you're working with Gore because he's doing an animated movie. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm not saying anything. Right. Got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about that. What was your reaction watching this for the first time? Because I don't want to do spoilers or anything, but it's kind of violent. Have you watched the episodes? No, I haven't had not. Well, they haven't sent me the episodes. So um, I haven't seen anything besides oh. the, the teaser. Um, but they don't, frankly, I don't think people were like, they don't send at like you often have to beg to see movies like I, I'm like there's been so many times I'm like I really want to see this movie before the premiere and they're like nah, we don't know and I'm like no y'all I need to see this movie um and so no I, I haven't they haven't sent me any episodes um but you know reading the script uh, the scripts are actually written very like visually it's you can definitely um which makes sense and obviously the comics you know you have a sense of what things are going to look like and it's already like how death and gore is depicted, I think is a big part of the show and the visual element of, of the comic. And um, I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's, I think it brings realism um, to sort of this heightened cartoon space. And um, honestly, I find when I do watch things that have a lot of death in them, I kind of get sometimes annoyed when it's just like, he died. I think, I think it's more interesting to deal with it. Uh, and I think it adds more layers and complexity to stories. And obviously, you know, there's different spaces for different things and maybe that's not always what you need, but, um, I have to say as a storyteller, I appreciate that a lot. And I think it, um, makes the characters more complicated and more interesting and more human and more relatable. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough being a superhero, <laughs> like, and it's tough being like, a teenager and suddenly being faced with this great responsibility. And what does that sacrifice? What does that mean? What does that mean for trauma, frankly, and how that affects your like interpersonal relationships? So yeah, I, I think that is special about Invincible. Yeah. Um, I also agree that oftentimes in TV and movies, you know, someone dies and then like the next scene, people just forget about the character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's kind and of, and that's also, I think what's different with Invincible is that, it, like consequences are really real so like if somebody dies people are like they don't come back you know what I mean and 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 I think in a lot of different versions of stories like you know there's like other a different dimension they come back or like there was a glitch in the blah 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 and then they time travel and they come back but I feel like here it's sort of you know what I mean like it, it's just sort of like a no that's that's life that's the consequence of life uh, you remember at the beginning of the interview when I said to you, what TV series would you love to guest star on? Mm -hmm. 
So I would say a huge percentage of people say Atlanta. Um, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> really? Um, like a lot, um, especially oh. especially when it was airing, when I yeah. did that question. So, of course, I'm just going to throw out there as a huge fan of the series. Um, where are you? Are you where are you in the filming process of season three and four? So we haven't started it yet, but we're right about to. I actually was a, I was actually supposed to have been traveled to where we're shooting um, on Monday. <laughs> um, I, I think I can say it. I think people know we're sh- we're shooting this um, we're sh- we're shooting this in in Europe. Yeah, because no, of I, how some of the storyline goes, um, but that got pushed, and so I'm I'm tra- I'm traveling March twenty second. Oh, so you're pretty close. Oh, shoot, yeah. So I, I mean, obviously we're quarantining and blah blah blah. So that's going to happen first. Um, but we are the process is is beginning very soon. Sure, I, I have uh, listen. I think one of the things about Atlanta more than anything is the writing is so brilliant. Um, have mm-hmm. you had a chance to read any of the scripts and what was, I just know? got them. Well, I got them like a week ago and I've read them. So yes, it's very good. Right. Uh, I want to, pre- so is there anything you can tease or, or not? No, I, I don't, I don't think I can. I'm not going to, I, we haven't even had the conversation yet. And so, got it. um, nada, but I think it's, I don't know. It's, it's going to be good. I think I'm very, listen, there's no doubt in my mind that, I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's, it's such an exceptional show. So I'll, I'll switch to something else, which is obviously uh, we're all so excited that um, Feige announced that Deadpool 3 is going to be in the MCU. And uh, I'm just curious, in the last year or two, have you actually spoken to Kevin Feige about Domino and Deadpool 3 or? No, um, I haven't. You know, I, I I would love to revive the role. You know, I, I think um, that was always something you know in the world of of what was potentially going to happen um but i haven't had any like specific conversations around it um but i you know i'm i'm interested i I, not only would i love to revive the role i would love to like figure out a way to like make a domino movie or something like that so um you know we'll we'll see we'll see what happens but i i haven't had any like personal conversations Sure. My last, the last subject I want to talk to you about is something I'm incredibly excited about, which is bullet train. Um, mm-hmm. I got, to, I got, I got to talk to Kelly, who's David's mm-hmm. wife, and mm-hmm. she was telling me some stuff uh, and about how all the action is on the train and it's very contained and it provides an interesting dynamic for the movie. Um, mm-hmm. Can you sort of talk about being a part of bullet train? What can you say about your character and, and doing the action in that film? I don't know if I can really talk about my character, but um, the the film itself is just like it's a really fun world and it's super funny. Like, uh, honestly, it was like it, being on that set felt just really kind of like a breath of fresh air in terms of like introducing a little bit of levity into my life. And um, and I just I had a great time doing that. It almost felt like I don't know. It was just super fun. And it was about like having fun (laughs) and um, um, not the, not the movie itself necessarily, but just like the experience, everybody wanted to like have a good time. And so, um, yeah, I just had a, you know, I think again, it's sort of this like, sort of like heightened world in a way. And, um, and this sort of, I don't know what I can say or not. I don't, I don't want to get you in trouble. Can I, can I, I'm out of time, but can I ask you something different about the movie that you won't sure. get in trouble for? Yeah. Um, so one of the things is I would imagine you grew up and are a huge Brad Pitt fan. So yeah. I'm just curious, what is it like making a movie with someone like Brad Pitt and maybe what surprised you about working with him? Hmm. He is, um, he is lovely. I had such a good time. Um, I think also, you know, honestly, I, I grew up obviously with him like in the film space and as somebody that I would like career wise, I, you know, I just respect so much and he's so talented. And, but then to like really see that in front of you and to be like, Oh, there is a reason why you have been so successful in your work because you are such a natural at a, you know, just being engaging and interesting on screen and to have great ideas. But then also he's like, 
he's kind and he's gentle and like, he's just fun to work with. And, um, you know, people like, I, I would love to work with him again, you know, and, um, you know, I don't know. I think there's a, there's a reason why people, um, you know, you want to see him on screen because he's, he's good at what he does. He's just good at it to see it in front of you. I'm like, wow, like, I, <laughs> I hope I can get there one day, <laughs> you know, just in terms of the ease of being able to create and to think on your feet and to, just, just make great choices on camera and he's, he's great at it. So yeah, yeah. David's not bad too. Um, I gotta go, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, Kelly told me a few things and it, it sounds awesome. Yeah. You know, I don't want to get you in trouble. So anyway, yeah. um, have fun in Europe though. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, and nice to see you again. Nice to see you. And, and hopefully when nine days uh, comes out, we'll talk more extensively you know, about that. It's such a good I thing. hope so. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Steve. Cool. Have a great day. Bye. You too.